want to talk today about is how aromatherapy can be used for PTSD and other um, emotional type symptoms. Um, I want to base this on a quadrant diagram inspired by Pierre Francome. And the aromatic families are broken down into four sections uh, with polar opposites um, representing yin in the north and yang in the south. And east is the hydrophobic, the oily. And to the west is the wet, the water, um, hydrophilic. Um, what's fascinating with this diagram is that you can look directly at a lateral plane um, versus um, north and south. And you look at the horizontal plane east and west. What I want to focus in on is the, the um, vertical plane here and the yin and the yang um, because pitta is fiery and hot and kapha is more stoic and stone. When you think of emotions, um, you think of anger in the pitta area, you think of anxiety, you think of um, things along that line. The kapha, you would think of things as, you know, maybe more sleepy, more um, up here you would be restless, down here you would be you know, just not able to function, you'd be frozen. So um, when you look at stress, anxiety, sleeplessness, and the consortium of emotional health issues, when we look at this 30,000 foot view, it starts to help us trigger in on what we want to look at. Um, I would say, you know, looking at the north part of this going down, I mean, you would see all the hides hitting this here at the top, and you would see esters. So these are going to be like your extreme ones, but it can go all the way down. And you see that the uh, sesquiterpenes and the diterpenes kind of bridge that whole gap. But when you get all the way down here to the bottom, you see that there are some that touch the bottom more than others as well. So um, let's see here. And so esters is what I want to look at. And um. I guess within these, when you look at an oil, you want to know really what the chemotypes are. And this next screen here kind of goes into, um, doo -doo -doo -doo, let me get there. These are what those ester rings look like um, and your oxides and your ethers. Um, these are the names of some of those and I can't actually make this any larger, but it gives those chemotypes directly. Um, as as this one here does as well. So back up to that first screen, um, you want to be able to obtain those chemotypes by obtaining a GCMS report. And um, the seller and producer can provide these and it helps look at the gas spectrometry um, of the oils. So like down here at the bottom where I've got the celery oil, um, you can come in here and view the GCMS report. And by looking at this one, um, it tells you what these chemotypes are. So with this oil, it's high in limoline and it's high in beta selenine. Now this isn't really on the emotional chart. I use this one to help with the dark spots that I get on my skin and it really works for that. But just to kind of give you an idea, when you look at doTERRA, this is what their um, information page looks like. It's not giving you any of those chemotypes whatsoever. And the importance of knowing these chemotypes is based on batching. Um, you know, it can change um, based on the year that the plant's growing. It can base, change on, based on soil, elevation, the generation of the plant. Um, the weather conditions, those are just to name a few. And so the, the differences in those chemotype percentages and what's there can change based on all those different dynamics. Um, so you want to look at that. It gives you an idea really of, um, you know, how, how those attributes within that are. The other thing about using essential oils before I get into, you know, what I use on these um, north and south polars is um, you can't be really faint of heart with it because you need to be knowledgeable in the potential 
um, skin reactions, whether they can create seizures, allergic reactions, contraindications um, for things like medications, um, if they're photosynthesizing, and any other precautions like whether you're pregnant, um, hazards for internal organ damage, uh, and that list goes on and on. Um, there is a screen here that kind of talks about what some of those contraindications are. Um, you know, caution if on anticoagulant medicine, um, generally regarded as um, safe is the gross. Um, high nervous and gastroenteric toxicity, um, highly neurotoxic. So there's things here that you want to be able to know what's going on within those particular groups and how much of those um, chemotypes are within an oil. So getting into what I use, um, I do like to use the esters um, up here for the calming and the relaxing part. And the one that I choose to use most often is rose geranium oil, and I use that as a deodorant. Um, and then uh, down here on the um, bottom area, I think I moved my little slide here, electron acceptors. I don't know why that moved. There we go. Um, that one, I tend to use the rose um, Damascus oil, and that one's high in uh, the methyl, well, I think in the ethers, um, no, the monoterpenes right here, the monoterpenols, this one. So um, one thing I want to say is that females and males might not really respond to those oils the same way. Um, you know, a guy using geranium oil as a deodorant might not be too pleasant, but in that regard, um, you know, Roman chamomile is higher in esters, so they might like that. Clary sage is something I would recommend um, for men. Uh, lavender and geranium oil are two oils that actually are high in esters and monoterpenols. So sometimes you can have an oil that can do like bipolar things, um, and I don't mean that like mentally, um, but they can they can be broad spectrum in the fact that they can do both things depending on what your needs are. So, um, so yeah, um, I wanted to mention those two oils, and then for men, um, black spruce might be good up here. Um, bergamot, which is like an orangey smelling one, clove buds might be okay for men. Um, and then when we get down to the, um, you know, wanting to, um, stimulate yourself and, um, get rid of, um, oh, where that's at, there we go, war and, oh, warm and cool, that's what it was, I messed up my graph, um, but down here on the, um, on the stimulating part, you know, when they're just depressed and can't move, tea tree oil, thyme, basil, coriander, um, lavender, rose, champaca. That's a really nice one um, for men. So there's just other options. And I just wanted to, to, um, let me get everything put back here where it's supposed to be. Um, I just wanted to kind of give a little overview on what I have been learning in school regarding the um, the oils and how we kind of grid it and see it um, and show you some of the, um, the PowerPoints here on what we do in our... Um, chemistry stuff. Anyway, blending is, is another, a whole nother area, and we're going to have a whole semester on blending. So, you know, putting these things together can change the chemical properties of them as well. So you want to be careful with that as well. Um, and that's what I've got.